Welcome to this video with an example of analyzing determinate structures. This is one of several videos in a short course on equilibrium posted at Tiriaz Toolbox, a website that contains notes, examples, and algorithms for structural analysis. The example shown here, on the right-hand side, is the first truss we encounter in this short course. It consists of three truss members, one pin support at the top, and vertical roller support at the bottom. Notice the 20 kN load at joint C. The objective is to determine the axial force in all three members due to that force. As a matter of standard procedure for the analysis of determinate structures, we could start by determining the three reaction forces by equilibrium. That would work well. However, it is possible to find a joint with two or less unknown forces even without knowing the reaction forces at the supports. At any joint with two or less unknown forces, we can employ horizontal and vertical equilibrium in order to determine the unknown forces. In this case, we have that situation at joint C, the 20 kN force is known, and the two axial forces in the truss members are unknown. Instead of expressing the two equilibrium equations for equilibrium in the horizontal and vertical directions, we wish to practice the closed force polygon approach. That is the graphical approach explained earlier in this short course on equilibrium. In step one of that approach, we create a solid dot that makes the point where we wish to apply equilibrium. Next, we draw lines to mark the directions of the forces on the joint. In this case, there is one known force and two unknowns. Notice that we cannot yet put arrows on the two unknown forces. At this time, we do not know in which direction they act. The second step in the graphical approach is to lay the force arrows next to each other in a force diagram. We first put the known 20 kN force arrow down on paper. Thereafter we arbitrarily select to continue the flow with the horizontal direction, followed by the incline direction. For the joint to be in equilibrium the arrows must form a closed force polygon that gets back to where the force arrow started. We are essentially using trigonometry to determine the value of these force arrows. However, notice that we are not using the sine and cosine functions. Instead, we see that the force polygon is the mirror image of the truss itself. That is the reason why we are using the member lengths in order to scale the 20 kN load into load values in the truss members. Consider, for example, the unknown horizontal force. We can say that the fraction of that force to 20 kN is the same as the fraction of 3 meters to 4 meters. From that equation we solve for 15 kN as shown here. In a similar manner, the force in the diagonal member is 25 kN. Notice that the direction of the force arrows is available from the force polygon. Because that force polygon must be closed, with a continuous flow of forces, we can read the arrows off that diagram. That is the reason why we can place the force arrows on the joint in step 3 of this procedure, as shown here. Notice that the force that presses on the joint means compression. Similarly, the horizontal force that pulls on the joint means tension in that horizontal truss member. We proceed to consider equilibrium at joint A, which is the bottom joint of the truss. The three-step procedure of the graphical approach is followed, also here. We know the 25 kN compressive force in the inclined member from the consideration of the previous joint. However, we do not know the force in the vertical member, nor the reaction force in the roller support. That means we have two question marks, and those can be resolved by equilibrium. In step 2, we first lay the known 25 kN force down on paper. We arbitrarily select to start from the tip of that arrow with the vertical direction. That is followed by the horizontal direction, which closes the force polygon. Remember, we must play around with lines in the direction of the two unknown forces in order to ensure a closed force polygon. By triangle equality, the fraction of the value of the vertical force to the inclined 25 kN force must equal the fraction of the 4 meter member to the 5 meter inclined member. That means the vertical force is 20 kN. By picking the arrow directions from step 2, we can draw the forces acting on joint A below, recognizing that the vertical force is tension, while the horizontal force is the support effectively pushing on the truss. When we move to joint B, which is the top left joint, 
we recognize that only the support reactions at B are still unknown. We already know all the member forces. Following the same procedure as earlier, we find that the force polygon is here simpler than usual. The horizontal member force is directly matched by the horizontal reaction force. The vertical member force is directly matched by the vertical reaction force. The figure at the bottom of the page summarizes the member forces that we found by the graphical approach in this example. Plus means tension. Minus means compression. Thanks for watching this video. Please visit Tiryaz Toolbox for more videos and more material relevant for the modern structural engineer. See you soon.